So this has been a pretty big week for AI image generation. Midjourney has launched its V6.1 model, so we're gonna dive into that. Plus, free open source Midjourney, well, we're gonna take a quick look at Explore. Leonardo.ai was acquired by Canva, so we're gonna take a look at what that might mean for the future of AI imagery and how that might affect Adobe. Plus, I've got some big news on Runway ML's Gen 3 pricing. It's doubling, I'm totally kidding. It's actually a good thing, let's dive in. Kicking off with Midjourney. The new 6.1 model was released this week. If you are a Midjourney user, 6.1 is set as the default. Overall, 6.1 is touted to have sharper image quality, more coherent outputs, improved text rendering, and enhanced upscaler. So kicking off obviously with our old chestnut, the man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. In V6, we get uh, kind of like young, skinny Seth Rogen. And well, I don't know, this guy I'm gonna call Mark Zuckerberg's less successful cousin who constantly reminds people that he is Mark Zuckerberg's cousin. Whereas 6.1 gives us outputs like this, which look, I know it's a 0.1 update. The differences are not going to be mind blowing, but I do assure you there are some notable improvements as we continue along. But overall, the improvements are not quite as dramatic as they were between version 5 and 5.1. Uh, for example, same prompt again in version 5 yielded these results. But then when we hopped up to version 5.1, yeah, there is a quite noticeable difference. And just as a point of reference, when you hop all the way back to version four, I mean, this was the look that we had back then. Man, I forgot that Midge really loved her buff dudes. I do think that 6.1 does pretty well when you add your personalization code to it or by adding dash dash P to the end of your prompt. Very briefly to do that, all you have to do is come over to the tasks button here uh, and then hit rank images. From there, you'll be provided with two different sets of images. Just choose whichever one you think is more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, you you do have to do 2000 of these, which I know sounds like a lot, but in all honesty, it goes by pretty quickly. And I don't know, so for some reason, it's somehow kind of just relaxing. Midjourney does say that this is a new personalization model with improved nuance, surprise, and accuracy. We also have a new Q mode, well, new slash old, uh, which you issue with the command dash dash Q space two. This will increase the textures of your image, but might possibly also come at the cost of your image's coherence. Taking a quick look at that, this is a prompt that I cribbed off of the community feed. Sorry, I totally forgot who it was. Uh, this is hair winds around head like smoke. All hair is shown. I thought this was a cool looking image. Now running that with a Q2, we get this image where I, I personally don't think that there was any hit to the image coherence here, but granted it is a very abstract image, uh, but you can definitely see that there is a decent amount of texture added to sort of the wispy smoke hair. In terms of the upscalers, it has been noted that the subtle upscale will probably be the one you should lean on the most. Creative may get a little bit on the heavy handed side. So giving that a test with this image, uh, this is another recurring character, the cyberpunk woman with white hair, only sea reft into a photograph uh, in a like Norish detective office. Uh, so this is just our standard output. If we give it a subtle, we end up with this, which is, to be honest, mostly the same, but when you kick it up to the creative, uh, we end up with this result, which in my opinion is just a little too heavy handed. Uh, it just kind of comes off as feeling very airbrushed um, or heavily manipulated. 6.1 also has better in image text coherence. So when you use quotation marks with a word, you should end up with that word. For example, here with Tim's Bar and Grill. This is 100% somewhere that I will be at some point in my life. You are all invited for a free drink and a free burger. That said, I don't want to necessarily over or undersell the new text in 6.1. For example, my vacation book read is The Book of Elsewhere by Keanu Wo Reeves and China Mielvel. Not to turn this into a book club, but to give some context. This is a sci-fi, pulpy, philosophical yarn about an immortal warrior pondering his own existence. It's very much a Keanu Reeves thing. And clearly, look, it's going to be a movie. So I decided to generate up some movie posters. Uh, Mid Journey does do a very good Keanu Reeves. Uh, and indeed, we do get the book of Elsewhere. I do find the title treatment itself a little on the bland side. So just as a note, it is always going to take a number of rerolls before you find something that a stylistically matches what you're looking for and is, you know, spelled correctly. 
I will say that I did like this one. And hey, if you do want to read along, uh, a link to the book of elsewhere is down below. Describe looks like it's getting an update as well. In fact, it actually might be getting an update right now uh, as I was just testing out the image references in 6.1 using our old friend, Daniela Van de Nonk, dressed as a pirate. And yeah, nothing is actually filling in. An interesting little thing that I noticed as well is that down here in tools, we can actually see describe here as well. Uh, unfortunately, it's actually broken right now, which again, tends to lead me to believe that the update is actually happening right now. I'll circle back to that when I get word on an official release. Describe is actually one of my favorite features of Midjourney. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, the image reference does look a lot more solid. Um, yeah, it's definitely taking a lot more details from that initial Daniela image and adding it into, you know, a mid journey re-rendering of it. So overall, not bad. It is a very slight quality boost. Uh, but then again, to be fair, it is a 0.1 update. We're not looking for a massive jump like we do between you know, version numbers like five to six and six to eventually seven. To that version 6.2 is not far behind. Apparently we'll be getting that within the month. Uh, and then from there, that's the end of version six updates. We're just gonna move on to version seven after that. The key features of version seven are said to have enhanced aesthetics, faster performance, smarter prompt understanding, increased knowledge base, improved word comprehension and rendering, and significant overall enhancements. And still on the roadmap are 3D and video and apparently uh, the storyteller tool will potentially release this year not sure exactly what that's going to look like but i am very excited about it very briefly i will have a full video on this coming up very soon uh, but this week flux has also released this is an open source text to image model created by black forest labs uh, it's a group of x stability employees this is being touted as an open source mid-journey competitor uh, i'll spend some time with it and let you know what i think shortly. In the meantime, if you want to check it out, it is linked down below. Moving on and kind of big news, Canva has acquired Leonardo.ai. That is something that I don't think anybody saw coming. This is kind of big news considering that Canva also recently acquired Affinity, which is kind of like Photoshop without all the Adobe attached to it. The price of the deal is undisclosed, but according to an AFR report, it was somewhere between 78.5 million and 120 million. Leonardo will continue to operate independently, which is actually great to hear. I've always said that Leonardo is very quick to adopt to new technologies like real-time universal upscaling and even way back uh, pose control and control net. On the Canva side, this acquisition seems to be more about getting Leonardo's new Phoenix model into their magic media feature. Personally, I'm not the biggest Canva user, but maybe having Leonardo built in will get me over there a little bit more. Uh, do let me know if you are a Canva power user and what I might be missing. But ultimately, I think that the more interesting and hidden story in all of this is the fact that again, Canva acquired Affinity. Affinity Photo, if you're not aware, is it's a lot like Photoshop, only, you know, you pay for it once and there is no subscription service. And when I say it's a lot like Photoshop, I mean, it's a lot like Photoshop because it was built by the people who originally built Photoshop. And actually, if you're watching this video shortly after release, I mean, it's really cheap. Uh, I guess they've got a sale going on right now where it's $34.99. Now, granted, I am pretty locked into the Adobe ecosystem, but I have used Affinity in the past, and I do think it's actually a really, really solid image editor. So if you are looking for one, it does have my recommendation. But again, the interesting part about all of this is because Affinity's parent company is Canva, and Canva now owns Leonardo. Does Affinity now have their own version of Gen Phil only powered by Leonardo? And while I do use GenFill a decent amount, it is mostly relegated to like extending backgrounds and removing objects. I, I think that anybody that spends a pretty good amount of time in Adobe's GenFill knows that it's not the most creative. Leonardo, on the other hand, is very creative. So will this eventually be the thing that really puts Affinity on the map? I mean, I don't know, but anything that shakes up Adobe, in my opinion, is a good thing. And back to the Canva side, it does not look like Leonardo has been integrated in yet, but then again, I'm not a Canva Pro user, so uh, maybe it's just hidden behind a paywall. Uh, I will let you know when I hear otherwise. Riding out with some Gen 3 news. Now, in my previous video on Gen 3's image to video, I think probably the one of the most 
recurring comments was that cost. It has certainly been an ongoing complaint and issue with Runway, uh, but on the plus side, it sounds like they're finally responding. Sliding into an announcement about Gen 3 Turbo, I'm sorry, Gen 3 Alpha Turbo, all of this is starting to sound like Street Fighter games. Um, we see here that Gen 3 will have a new turbo model that will generate uh, video much faster. So in, in 11 seconds, you can cover, you know, a Michelangelo statue in Hershey's chocolate syrup if you want to. Um, whereas on the other side, we see, you know, benchmarking, uh, the old model is still cranking away. So yeah, uh, that's good. But also in the good category is the fact that they say that they'll be rolling out the turbo for image to video with significantly lower pricing over the coming days and making it available to free users. Now, as a note, I do think that there was some confusion and some people thought that the $95 unlimited plan was, was the new pricing structure. So I did reach out to Runway just to double check. And indeed the official announcement on pricing has not been made yet so uh it will you know definitely be lower than 95 dollars so i guess we'll see soon enough what runway considers significant uh that said again kudos to runway for at least responding to what was turning into in my opinion a pretty major issue i'll let you know as soon as we hear word on the final runway price in the meantime i thank you for watching my name is tim